Hello everyone, and welcome to RBL Talk. On this week's show, we have some club news. We recap the Stuttgart game. We take a look ahead to our next match, with a preview against Union Berlin in the Bundesliga, and we round out the show with the RBL Talk segment, with you, the listeners, input on the show. RB Leipzig in crisis. After the 2-5 debacle in Stuttgart, the catastrophic appearance is not only the first failure against the favourite opponent. Previously, nine wins, two draws. It was also the third in a row. Historically, the Saxons have never started a new year so badly in their history. As their only team in the Bundesliga, Leipzig in 2024 is still without a point. Sports director, Roven Schroeder. We have to look very closely at what happened. The most important thing is to really work things up very carefully. There were three Bundesliga defeats in a row for the so successful club last in November, December 2021. Coach Jesse Marsh was then fired. Does the same fate now also befell Marco Rosa? No. A dismissal is currently not up for the discussion. We are absolutely far from that, Schroeder says, clearly on build demand. Leipzig's sport director and the other bosses continue to have complete confidence, especially due to the cup victory last summer, the performances in the Champions League, and the good first round and native of Leipzig still has credit. But of course, next Sunday against Union, he and his team will have to deliver. Now it's also my job to get the thing back on track. Of course this makes it a bit more difficult with every non-result that comes. But we are already know that. But we already know that, says Rosa on ZDF. Rose has to deliver now. What he means. In the preseason, RB Leipzig already conceded three competitive match defeats with him in a row. Rosa was under pressure but won the important cup quarterfinals against Dortmund in April 2023 and nine of the last 10 games. And this time in, we already have a backpack now that we have to carry, especially with the goals we have, says Rosa. And further, we have to work through this now, come up with a simple plan for next week in order to get the other parts of the boys' brain free for what game that they don't think so much because otherwise the bosses should also start pondering quickly. With the quick recap of the Stuttgart game, what we did right, clinical. When we shot on goal, we were very clinical. Didn't take as many shots on target to score. We gave Orban and Elmas minutes to get them back into the fold hopefully aiming to have Willy Orban start in a few weeks against Real Madrid. What we did wrong. Horrid defending at set pieces. We conceded at least two goals with this poor defending, which we could have prevented. Wrong substitutions. Wrong substitutions at the wrong time. Pausen should have came on earlier and Schlager should have been taken off when the substitution started. We were sloppy with our challenges. We didn't mark well enough and gave them too much time and space on the ball. Three things we learned v Stuttgart. Our defensive issues aren't just temporarily, but run deep. This isn't going to be fixed overnight, and is going to take several weeks. Rosa might be finished at Leipzig if results continue. Hopefully. He can turn it around soon. And there's always a first for everything, with Stuttgart beating us for the very first time. And now for the detail review. We never really got into the game early on. We didn't seem to keep our shape, and we didn't look like a threat in the opening 20 minutes of the game. In fact, we didn't really show up until Round crossed the ball from a corner to an unmarked Sesco, who headed home for our first goal. At that stage, it was 1-1, due to the penalty from Mo Simakan, which unfortunately, in the laws of the game, is a penalty. I don't like it, 
and those being given due to the fact that the player is jumping and trying to balance as they jump. You essentially are telling players to jump like a salmon out of water to not concede penalties. But that jumping action is not natural. Going into the break, it was 2-1. It wasn't the worst position to be in, especially the balance of play, as we were poor. But we could have won or even salvaged a point if we got our act together. When we conceded straight after the break, Simakon should have been swapped out with Benny Henricks at around the 55th minute mark, as he clearly didn't look comfortable in challenging for the ball, having already been booked. The reason for the 55 minute mark is when we had Openda score against the balance of play, with a beautiful clinical finish from just outside the box. As energy is high and fresh legs comes into the play, really showing we're trying to take on the game instead of Marco Rosa, who's just sitting on the bench, no enthusiasm or anything when he scored. Once Dennis Undav turned his brace into a hat trick, it was all over. With 15 minutes plus out of time to go, I couldn't see a way back for us, and came to terms that we witnessed history for Stuttgart, beating us for the first time, which was well deserved. They played brilliantly all across the pitch, and were rightful winners on the day. Mo Simikon will be unavailable against FC Union Berlin due to picking up five yellow cards. Previewing the Union Berlin game. Union Berlin have won against Leipzig as recent as February last year in the Bundesliga. But they were a different team then, finishing fourth. And I don't know if it's a beyond expectations year, but they seem to be slowly getting better each season, climbing the table. This season, however, is different. They're a different side. They now have a new manager in Ninad Bajelika who had only been at the helm for seven matches, has picked up a few wins and has had improved the quality on the pitch. But after slapping Leroy Sane in their 1-0 loss against Bayern, is serving his second game in his three-match ban and won't be in the dugout in the Red Bull Arena. So it will be interesting how they play as they manage to pick up a 1-0 win against Darmstadt without having him on the touchline. Some interesting match facts leading into this game. Leipzig are ranked 4th in goals scored per match, averaging 2.2 goals. Leipzig and Union Berlin have not drawn any of their last 11 matches against each other. Leipzig have lost their last 3 matches. Union Berlin are ranked 16th in goals scored per match, averaging 1 goal a game. They haven't scored in three away matches, and they haven't won an away game in their last 12 matches. What I'd like to see in the next match. Galachi to start. Letting in five goals, although everyone, especially the defenders, have to take some of that blame. I think it's time to see if Galachi can retain the number one keeper spot. After all, it is his shirt number. Otherwise, we should loan him out or sell him on, when, as his quality, we'll just be wasting away on the bench if we only play Janus. And both of our goalkeepers are in their 30s and starting to get towards the twilight of their careers. It wouldn't be a bad idea if we're not going to be playing Peter Galacci, loaning him out or selling him on and bringing in a younger goalkeeper into the fold. Union Berlin are a different team than they were last season. This is still a danger game for us. We could quite easily lose and will do if we take this game easy. We need to be on the front foot from the get-go and really turn things around. I expect Xavi to come back and make an immediate impact. We should be winning around with a 3-1 scoreline if we play to our potential, especially being at home. As we are a different side at home, we have to put this horrid defending behind us. But if we show up the same way we did against Stuttgart, it will be a 2-1 loss. I can't see Union Berlin keeping a clean sheet, and I don't think the lads will let themselves lose this game either. Remember, you can be a part of the show too, with the RBO Talk segment. You can even come on the show as a special guest. The way you do this is by interacting with us on Spotify, social media, such as X or Twitter, or email in 
at show at rbltalk.com. More information in detail on how to get involved with the show for free in the show notes. Fallen Hero said, What do we need to do to not get embarrassed by Real Madrid? Well, Fallen Hero, it's quite simple, really, but hard for our team to achieve at the moment, and that is defend well. I predict a high-scoring affair, and hopefully we can win on aggregate, as we have been able to beat Madrid in the past. But this is a completely different Madrid team than that game back in 2023. If we can fix these defensive issues at the back, we will be able to compete with the best. We've showed that time and time again. And if I was Marco Rosa, that's exactly what I'd be looking forward to. I would be implementing the fixes and changes in our defence throughout the next Bundesliga games to be ready to go against the European record champions, Real Madrid. Soon a word I said, didn't get to watch the game today. Can't wait to see the highlights tomorrow. Looks like it was pretty eventful. I'm not an RB fan at all, but I support all Bundesliga fans. Thanks, Suna Werder. Afiz said, Will Rosa be manager by the end of the season? Three losses in a row, Madrid next month, and Frankfurt breathing down our necks. Well, I do believe he will be, but that depends on the month of football in February. If he loses against Union Berlin, alarm bells will be ringing. We have danger games against Gladbach and Bayern as well. You could say Bochum on their day can beat us as we drop points to them in round 7. If we manage to drop down to 8th by the end of February, a change is highly possible. But what would be more certain is that if we don't get any European football by season's end, as realistically, we're not winning the Champions League with the quality of football that's been on display. He will be sacked, as a minimum is sixth, which qualifies us for European football, and would be our equal worst finish in a Bundesliga season, which happened in our second year, which wasn't that bad, as I felt we overachieved in our targets in our debut year in the Bundesliga to be runners-up to Bayern. And just to quickly elaborate, the main reason why that European football is a must is because to grow our brand and to grow the club you need to attract the best players, and the best players want to play European football, which most players want to play UFA Champions League. So finishing sixth is below the standard of bringing in top, top players. However, European football is better than non-European football. And lastly, Jordan Glass has an email submission. They said, a bit of a different note this week as I do not want to talk about that Stuttgart game. Ouch. Listening to the podcast discussion with Travis from VFB Stuttgart Americana this morning, you all brought up an interesting topic, which, which is, why Leipzig? So I'm curious, if the population that listens to your podcast would want to input how and why they are a Leipzig fan. I'd love to hear why others support the club, especially given how new they are. I'll be happy to go first. I grew up in northern New Jersey, outside New York City, and my father took my brothers and I to a World Cup game between Norway and Ireland in 1994. I was instantly hooked to soccer. The MLS just launched, and the New York, New Jersey Metro Stars were my local team, and I jumped on that bandwagon. My family is of Austrian-slash-German heritage and I had travelled to Salzburg, which I fell in love with, and adopted RB Salzburg as a new team, and became the New York Red Bulls. Naturally, when Leipzig was brought out by Red Bull, I immediately jumped on board. Growing up, I was able to watch some Bundesliga, but it was difficult in the US until ESPN picked up the feed. Now I watch every game. I've been to New York Red Bulls games and Red Bull Salzburg games, but have not checked off Leipzig yet. It would be great to hear more from the community on them becoming Leipzig fans. That's a good idea, Jordan. If you listen to the show, send in why you're a Leipzig fan and supporter. As always, I'd like to thank all backers, supporters of the show, and thank you for listening to this podcast. If you could take a moment to rate us where you listen to this podcast, 
write a quick review or tell a friend about the show. It really helps us find new listeners and grow the show. So until next time, I've been Justin Crozer. Bye-bye for now.